Um, so yeah, for those that don't know me, uh, my name's George and I uh, work in the TaylorMade team with Georgie Dodds, my colleague. Um, I'm now heading up the operations across Southeast Asia and also parts of South America, including Suriname. Um, now, Suriname um, is a country I visited at the back end of, of uh, last year. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed it so much. Um, I actually went on holiday, but I decided, do you know what? I really want to talk about kind of a mix of what I found, um, but also, you know, the potential for um, Nature Trek clients to get out there too. Um, so I've tried to use kind of as many photos as possible from my trip. Um, to kind of give some extra perspective on, on you know, first-hand perspective on what you could see. Um, so currently, you know, I'm kind of working on a um, launching a group tour. It's kind of in the process. Um, if that's of interest to anyone, I'd love to hear from you. Um, but right now it's kind of available for tailor-made travel. Um, so just bear that in mind as sort of we move through the slides. But um, yeah, I'm going to try and go through quite a lot here. So do bear with me. Um, so, I mean, the first question I often get asked is, uh, where on earth is Suriname? Um, now, no, you know, <laughs> bit of a giveaway from the, the, the kind of talk theme tonight. It's South America. Uh, it's over here on the northeast coast of South America. Um, so it's actually right here, sandwiched in between French Guiana and Guiana, just above Brazil. And this is what we call the Guiana Shield Biodiversity Hotspot. Um, so Suriname itself is actually an ex-Dutch colony. So it's um it's actually primary language is Dutch, unlike uh, much of the rest of South America. So it's not Portuguese or Spanish, as you might expect. Um, but it's a real blend of culture and it actually has a real Caribbean feel to it. Um, quite different from some of the surrounding countries and also quite a significant input from Indonesia as well. So actually, you know, there's quite a lot of Javan cuisine as well. So it's a, it's a really fun and interesting place to be in general. Um, the population size is only around 600,000 people. So to put that in context, that's roughly less than half the size of Hampshire, where we are in the UK. And all of those people are concentrated on the coast, uh, leaving much of that uh, interior completely untouched. And if we flip over to the satellite view, uh, you can see just how much forest cover actually remains. Um, in fact, 93% of Suriname is uh, covered in forest, which gives it the highest percentage forest cover of any country on Earth. Um, and, you know, because of that, you get plentiful wildlife outside of protected areas, which for me makes car journeys and transfers all the more interesting because you effectively, you can't switch off. You just never know what's going to turn up. Um, so it is part of the wider Amazon rainforest, but it's not connected to the Amazon river basin itself. So it's a really unique hub of biodiversity. Um, I actually just want to start focusing on this area to the south of Paramaribo, the capital. This is just where I started my tour. Um, it's called the Brocopondo Reservoir which covers quite a significant proportion of the total land area of Suriname, uh, around 1% of the country, which is, uh, yeah, it's quite significant. Um, and, you know, it came about from the construction of the Afro Dam in 1959, uh, which actually supplies hydroelectric power to most of uh, Paramaribo now. But in the meantime, it's obviously flooded this huge area of forest. And now you get this sort of relic um, flooded forest with these uh, ancient bare tree stumps sticking out of the uh, of the lake which is um makes really really great um scouting posts and nesting holes for things like toucans parakeets kingfishers raptors um so that's it's a really interesting area to start birding but actually one of the major reasons for visiting this area in particular is to find this little guy who's um an endemic um subspecies called the purple harlequin toad now previously this species was only known to a tiny isolated mountaintop in the interior uh, but it's recently been found in some of the creeks on this lake. Um, and it makes, yeah, it makes a really nice trip to go to go and uh, see these guys and, and, and photograph them. Really, really attractive um, amphibians. And, and in general, the area is very good for amphibians. Uh, so we ran into this smoky jungle frog as well. Um, and yeah, it's worth mentioning that Suriname in general is, is a sort of herpetologist paradise. Um, I mean, we encountered 52 species in around eight and a half days in the dry season, which is the off season. Um, and my guide informs me that if you come in the wet season, you can double that. So, I mean, it's if you're into that, it's an amazing place. Um, so we also found things like smooth fronted caiman, which is one of the four species here. It's actually a dwarf caiman. And then the surrounding area is, is really nice, um, open country birding. Uh, it's not quite as dense forest. So you get things like yellow and red rump caciques, but also a host of flycatchers, cuckoos, ant shrikes, that kind of thing. Um, so that's really nice as well. And then just to the sort of uh, northwest corner of the Brocopondo Reservoir, you've got this forested mountaintop called Brownsburg. Uh, now, 
I don't want to spend too much time on Brownsburg simply because, to be completely honest, it's not the easiest place to access and the accommodation is incredibly basic. Uh, but as you can see, and this was the view from the balcony, uh, it's an absolutely stunning location and packed full of wildlife. So if you're OK roughing it for a few nights and if that's really what you want to do more on a tailor made basis, then absolutely um, give it a go. Um, I mean, one of the major reasons for, for birders in particular to come here is to see grey wing trumpeter. And it is probably the best place in the world to see this species uh, alongside some others. But this is really the key draw for this location. Um, me personally, I'm more of a mammal man. And uh, one of the reasons I came here is because um, all eight of Suriname's primate species are resident, uh, including this white-faced sake. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my draw too. And we had some really great success with the primate species here. Um, nocturnal spotlighting is also really productive. Um, we had uh, multiple nine-banded armadillos. Uh, in one evening, we had three sightings of lowland packer. And if anyone's ever spotlighted in the Amazon before, you know that's not an easy species to see at all. So we were very lucky there. Uh, but also multiple species of opossum, kinkajou, tyra. Um, we even had a tapir up on the mountain. And you've also got an outside chance for, for some of the cat species as well. Um, like much of Suriname, this area is fantastic for raptors. So you've got soaring raptors like swallowtail kites, but also forest dwelling raptors like uh, white hawk and a couple of the forest falcons too. Um, the owling is also very good after dark. So here in particular, spectacled owl and foothill screech owl, particular specialities. And as I say, uh, it's a, another really good spot for herbs, particularly snakes. We found this quite wonderful Chironius multiventris, uh, but it's also a very good uh, a place to find Amazon palm pit viper, which is quite a key target for some herpers. Um, if we zoom back out and head a bit southwest, there's an area of forest here called Fredberg. Um, now, Fredberg is, I would say, probably the top birding hotspot in Suriname, uh, in, you know, in terms of outright birding. I mean, bearing in mind that Suriname, uh, Suriname is, is a predominantly forested habitat, it's possible to clock sort of upwards of 350 species in around two weeks, which is pretty staggering for, for yeah, this kind of habitat. Um, one of the key reasons for visiting Fredberg in particular is to find the Guyana and Cock of the Rock, which is obviously quite a special bird in this area. Um, there are four active leks currently um, in, in this area alone. Um, we managed to find this guy unfortunately was a bit hiding because we, we arrived a little bit late in the day. Uh, but they are, if, if you had more time, they are um, out and about and some really good opportunities for photography. Um, but the habitat in general is just absolutely fantastic. You see on the right hand side here, uh, these sort of old uh, jungle roads go on for miles and miles and miles. And you're pretty much the only people there. Um, and in the tall trees, it's, you know, it's not unusual to see five or six different species of woodpecker, plus uh, katingas, tanagers, fruit crows. Um, it's particularly good for the Guyana red katinga and the crimson fruit crow, um, but also there's plenty more colourful widespread species like a uh, paradise tanager, purple breasted katinga, etc. Um, it's also a very good place to find capuchin bird. Um, if anyone's ever heard capuchin bird, it's a very bizarre sounding thing. It sounds like a distant chainsaw. Um, and the elusive uh, zigzag heron is another speciality here, which is typically pretty difficult to find, but um, it's pretty reliable here. Always a chance for a flyby from uh, some macaws. We had some really nice sightings of red and green macaws while we were here. Um, and just in general, uh, a big diversity of parrots and parakeets. So you've got blue-headed, mealy, orange-winged parrots, also painted parakeets. And uh, as Rob was uh, mentioning earlier, uh, also ornate hawk eagle. We did have a flyby. Unfortunately, this one is not my photo. Uh, it was just a flyby. Um, but there's also chances for both harpy eagle and crested eagle here. And uh, rather guttingly, there was a harpy eagle while we were here and we narrowly, narrowly missed it. Um, but yeah, you just never know when it's going to turn up. So that's a really exciting thing as well. Um, around the camp itself, uh, the birding is very, very good. Uh, you've got honey creepers, um, ant wrens, crimson topaz, lots of lovely mixed flocks. Um, it is worth mentioning again that the Fredberg accommodation is pretty basic. Uh, it's a lot less basic than Brownsburg, but still, um, you know, you, you do need to uh, accept that it's going to be basic if you'd like to visit here um but yeah so it's also a very good spot for primates again all of the eight species are present here we managed to see guyana and red howler monkey every day actually um you can see these guys by the side of the road um just worth keeping an eye out on the road journeys but also this is a very good spot for red faced spider monkey or um guyana and spider monkey it's the guyana and shield endemic another guyana and shield endemic is the golden handed or midas tamarin very very pretty monkey and again great spotlighting opportunities after dark we found this fantastic emerald tree boa, which is a real target for herpers. 
um, as well as um, the red-tailed boa constrictor, which is a sort of color morph that um, seems to be only be present in Suriname. So to the west of Suriname, you've kind of got the jewel in the crown. Uh, this is an area called Cabalebo. Um, and I just wanted to use the satellite imagery here to just demonstrate how remote this place is. I mean, uh, it's only accessible by light aircraft. And I think the nearest road is around 130 kilometers away. Um, and that flight itself is uh, absolutely spectacular. You're flying over unbroken jungle for miles uh, to this airstrip. Um, and yeah, so it, it's just a very special place. It's also never been inhabited by local indigenous people. So the wildlife has not been hunted uh, and therefore it's not very afraid of humans. Um, so we can take boat trips down the river, but we'll also do walks into the jungle. There's even sports fishing, if, um, if people are interested in that as well, for some really nice big species. Um, but yeah, the amount of wildlife here combined with their sort of lack of human fear makes it a top destination for some of the Amazon's more elusive, large iconic mammals like Brazilian tapir. Um, and even jaguar. Um, this photo was taken in Cabo Lebo. Um, if anyone's tried to look for jaguar in the Amazon, you'll know it's incredibly difficult. They are very, very elusive anywhere outside the Pantanal, really, or Pantanal-esque habitat. Um, but they do occasionally turn up here. Um, so do puma. They are occasionally sighted across in the airstrip. And uh, ocelots as well sometimes come to the back of the lodge to take scraps. Um, so, you know, it's important to note this is still a dense rainforest. It's, it's not a zoo. Uh, sightings are not going to be frequent and they're certainly not guaranteed. Uh, but this is sort of wild Amazon rainforest, as it has been for thousands of years, which to me just kind of surpasses any guarantees, because I just find it very exciting to know that you're in a completely untouched habitat and this is how it's been forever. Um, you know, so that's a really cool thing. Uh, some of the more common ter uh, terrestrial diurnal mammals uh, include red rump to guti. Also, you've got South American huati, some terra, um, other things like that. And again, uh, this is a top spot for harpy eagle and crested eagle. Um, they do turn up every now and then. It's, it's, a, it's a really nice indicator of a pristine rainforest. Um, there are no sort of canopy viewing towers like there are in the Brazilian Amazon, for instance. Uh, but if there is one in the area, which there is quite often, um, they'll keep a tab. You know, local guides will keep tabs on it. It's also good for Guyana endemics like Guyana and Tucanat, um, and also Morel Guan, red fruited Caracara. And if you're not going to go to Brownsburg, you've also got a fairly good chance for grey winged trumpeter here, too. Macaws are quite common. There's in fact five species present here. And then cruising down the river uh, is always a good place to see some water birds. Uh, I mean, it's important to note that, that, you know, this is pristine habitat. So theoretically, any of the Amazons, uh, Surinamese Amazons wildlife is possible here, uh, including things like giant river otter and such. Um, I mean, zooming out and heading a little bit north of Cabalebo is, is, is an area called Marataka. Um, this is, again, a, a rarely visited area of Suriname. Uh, it's a remote tributary. Um, and it's kind of the perfect combination of, of, of remote, but it is accessible. It's more accessible. It's accessible by road as opposed to flight, uh, but very rarely visited. So if you're if you're out on the river, you're likely to be the only boat bar, maybe a couple of local fishermen. So it's very, very quiet. Um, and it's a great place to find giant river otter and um, West Indian manatee too, uh, both of which, you know, with a couple of nights, you've got a very good chance of. Uh, we were lucky enough to have five sightings of manatee and a family of otters within our first hour on the river. Um, not saying that that will happen if you if you <laughs> were to go, but it just gives an example of how special this, this place is. Um, there's also three species of primate which are quite regularly seen. You've got the garn and squirrel monkey, the red howler and the garn and brown capuchin, but all eight species of, of primate are possible here as well. Uh, also the best location in the country for toco toucan, the largest of the toucan species, but um, all six of um, Suriname's toucans and toucanets are present. And we actually managed to see five of them in the morning. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a cool spot for those two. And again, really good for parrots. Um, red fan parrot was probably my favorite. And there's also some Mauritius palms where the uh, blue and yellow macaws nest uh, right by the river in the village uh, near where we stay to access the river. Also very good for canopy birds like uh, bare neck fruit crow. Um, and also because it's a quieter river, you've got chances for sh shy species like um, sun grebe, boat billed heron, uh, sun mitten perhaps. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice place for those as well. Um, green anacondas um, are, are quite regular, especially in the mating season. You can get some really, really big ones if that's a, your, your thing. And this area combines really well with a, a, um, a coastal area um, near the town of Paradise, which I think is a fantastic name for a, for a village. Um, it's called Biggie Pan, uh, which literally translates to Big Lake. Uh, and this is a huge uh, wetland area with mangrove, mangrove channels and creeks. Um, and it's home to more than 100 species of bird, 
but most famous for its large congregations of scarlet ibis, um, which is which is really, really, really impressive to see in the numbers they're present in. Um, we can stay at a really nice lodge here. Um, this is a sort of four four star lodge right out on the lake and take boat trips out, um, you know, um, at nighttime and sunrise, sunset during the day, whenever we want, really. Um, so there's American flamingo here, roseate spoonbill, um, some other impressive species like that. But then you've also got a host of waders, a bunch of sandpipers, plovers, um, you know, dorwitches and things like that to sort through. Um, and then also the, the cruisers, as I like to call them, you've got brown pelicans, black skimmers, um, frigate birds as well. Um, a sort of whole host of herons and egrets. And then, yeah, in terms of photography opportunities, um, yeah, going out at sunrise and sunset is, is pretty special. Um, yeah, it's a particularly magical site um, at the, kind of that time of day. Um, and then in these quieter back channels, um, you never really know what's going to turn up. So we were lucky to run into this roosting great horn dow, which is a really nice find. And yeah, as I say, once again, raptors are pretty much ever present. So you've got the three species of hawk, which are fairly regularly seen here, as well as osprey. Um, and this one in the middle, the Rufus crab hawk, is a bit of a speciality uh, in the Guianas over this side. Um, and yeah, so I mean, on the way to Biggie Pan itself, um, we can stop off and do some roadside birding. Quite a few locations, but one of the places we can stop is at a red-bellied macaw roost. And just, uh, yeah, we'll see if they're in. It's one of the many places we can stop. But as I say, I mean, there's plenty of great wildlife hotspots within striking distance of the capital. Uh, you really don't need to go that far. So there's a place here called uh, Pepperpot Nature Park, which is a really delightful segment of rainforest right on the outskirts of the city. Um, and we've got a really nice lodge there called Zootopia. And um, we can basically base ourselves here um, for, for a couple of nights and, and just do day trips out. Um, as I say, there, there is so much wildlife so close to the capital, you really don't even need to go that far. Um, so it's, it's nice to have, a, you know, a few days relaxing either, at, uh, you know, the beginning, middle and end of the tour. Um, so, you know, as I say, I was blown away by the density of wildlife uh, so close to the capital city. It really was pretty impressive. Um, so you've got um, large mixed troops of, of um, monkeys. You've got garden and squirrel monkeys and brown capuchins in, in, in huge numbers uh, during the daytime. You've also got an outside chance for things like golden handed tamarind um and perhaps white face sake it's also very very good for sloths um actually we you can see sloths all over suriname there's both pale-throated three-toed sloth and hoffman's two-toed sloth um but yeah um we actually managed to see six of these pale-throated three-toed sloths in one evening which was just great um and another animal that i'd not seen uh in any of my previous trips to the neotropics was brazilian porcupine and we were picking up kind of three or four individuals in a, in a night. Again, uh, just the, the density close to, to the capital city was pretty astonishing. Um, the giveaway for these guys is they have quite a hot, sweaty smell. Um, so it's not necessarily your tour leader. Um, it's, it could be a porcupine. Um, so if they try and tell you that, they're not necessarily lying. Um, <laughs> so there's also plenty of opossum species that we managed to pick up. Um, you've got common opossum and, and, and brown eyed four opossum and things like that. Um, and then just because, you know, as much of Suriname goes, you just don't know what's going to turn up. So they do occasionally get giant anteater, jaguarundi, uh, ocelot, um, water opossum on occasion. And uh, we actually had a capybara, which was a new record uh, in the park. So, yeah, that was really, really special as well. Uh, by day, it's a pretty famous um, birding hotspot, particularly just because of how accessible it is. Um, so, I mean, common birds like these tanagers can be seen pretty much all over the country. Uh, but it's very good for uh, some of the more restricted range species like blood-colored woodpecker and um, arrowhead piculate, which is actually the only endemic to Suriname. And also, you know, some stunning, stunning birds like crimson hooded mannequin are, are relatively easy to find sort of in this area and in surrounding areas as well. Um, so, there's yeah, there's plenty to explore. And if you're very lucky, um, there's even a, a few records of a Garmi heron in this park, um, which kind of, I think, goes quite a long way to show how pristine it still is, considering how reclusive this bird usually is. Um, as I've said once, well, yeah, uh, say it once again, that the herping is very, very good. Um, yeah, you've got snakes and lizards and you've also got the Suriname toad, um, which is quite a funny looking thing. And then, you know, not too far from, from Paramaribo, uh, closer to the international airport, which is about an hour away, um, you've got a nice savannah forest mosaic, um, which is a little bit uh, um, different and nice for some open country species like golden-headed mannequin. Uh, spotted puffbird, KNJ, things like that. 
and also some nice owling locations for the, these in particular we've got some good spots for um and then you know if, if that doesn't take your fancy then we can also go across to the estuary to the river and um go after guyana dolphin which are a kind of a semi-endemic to the northeast coast of south america um and you've got your waders there as well if you choose not to go across to biggie pan um so i mean all in all there just is really a wealth to see and it's a real struggle to try and squeeze this into a short 20 minute talk um but i do hope it was interesting um and yeah if you are interested in visiting please do get in touch with me as i say uh, we can run tailor-made trips there pretty much immediately uh, but if you are interested in maybe a future group tour then yeah i'd love to hear from you as well